If we then look at the South African business, um, you know, Itu and his team have produced a spectacular result in, in really just an environment that he defined as probably the toughest in a decade. When you look at sort of all the, uh, you know, the macroeconomic environment, you know, issues and so on that uh, that one had to deal with um, and continues to have to deal with. So like for like trading density growth was, was 3.4%. But remember that looks at a pure 24 month basis. If you take into account the asset management initiatives that the team uh, completed, and that was largely around the Edcon reletting and uh, uh, Pinecrest and Maluti and filling vacancies, we actually grew trading densities by around 5.1%, um, which is well ahead of inflation and I think well ahead of our peer group. And you can just see how well that uh, the team have done. Retail vacancies dropped slightly from 3% to uh, 29 uh, We had an 84% tenant retention ratio and positive reversions of 1.1%. Of and of that, you must understand, we, 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 um, we signed over 350 leases over the period. And about 70% of them, 72%, I think, in fact, were positive reversions, about 10% were flat, and only the balance were negative. And I always think that that is a better indication of the health of the portfolio, um, of being sort of a, a well-rented portfolio that still has in normal, environment, in normal environments upside potential on the rentals, and maybe still does, um, you know, once we, we through COVID. When you look at the trading stats in the portfolio, you look at our rent to sales ratio of 6%, um, you know, as another metric, average base rentals, there is still certainly upside potential on our portfolio. And uh, retail life for life net income growth of 6%, again, I think a standout result amongst uh, our peer group. So really um, a tremendously strong operating result on our two core pillars of, uh, of Spain and South Africa. And when you look at the balance sheet, um, I think the key on the balance sheet is really to look at the interest cover ratio sitting at 5.8 times, um, which is unbelievably healthy. You would need to see a 66% drop in EBITDA, which Lawrence has calculated about eight months of no rent on the portfolio. Um, before we, we start getting into the territory of breaching covenant. And I think you can see sort of we are therefore very confident that having done all of our stress testing um, and all of our scenario planning, and we really have gone that in a tremendous amount of detail, um, we are very comfortable that Bukile remains comfortably solvent and liquid uh, under almost all scenarios. Um, and we are compliant with all of our funding uh, and debt covenants. So I think in a very good position, um, you know, from a balance sheet position, notwithstanding that the LTV is slightly higher than we would want it to be, um, I think there's a, a bit of bad luck and two things contributed to that to a large degree. Um, but nonetheless, it is something that we will work to bring down. Uh, we know what levers need to be pulled and we'll be working to bring that down towards the 40% level and hopefully below over the next period, uh, the next couple of years to, uh, you know, to get that into a level where I think the market and everybody would be a lot more comfortable. But I do want to stress that the, the bankers and the funders um, are all very, very comfortable where our balance sheet sits at the moment. And that is because ultimately it's about cash flow and with an interest cover ratio of 5.8 times, that is exceptionally strong. So all in all, I think the business is in, in very good health. And, um, and that is the platform of which we then have been looking to uh, tackle the, uh, the the COVID crisis. What we realized, you know, at, at the very beginning, is that this is a global humanitarian crisis. This is not a company that has managed badly. Um, it's not a sector that's gone out of favor. This is affecting everybody. Nobody is immune to what's going on, um, and we need to take solace in that. That um, you know, we we really are in uh, unprecedented times, and I think it when times are tough that management teams metal is really tested and how to get through it and i think my team have come through absolutely spectacularly um in, in what they've done so we we looked and said well quite clearly the most important thing we have to focus on is the health and safety of our stakeholders um, we have appointed professor barry Schub as one of the leading virologists in, in the country and in fact one of the global experts on hygiene um, onto our board as a special advisor. Um, and Barry is there to sort of make sure that he's engaging with Alfonso and Etu around um, making sure we're putting in the most appropriate hygiene protocols in our shopping centers to make them safe and welcoming environments 
for our, our customers and our tenants. That is the most important thing that we are working that we are looking at. From a staff point of view, Barry is guiding us in terms of when we uh, need to come back to the office. Uh, we are all still working remotely, both in, in Spain and South Africa, and only coming into the office for uh, you know emergency uh, needs, uh, for example, like the results. Otherwise, we are working amazingly um, on a remote uh, a remote basis. We also have said that this is a time for uh, co op responsible corporate leadership. Um, and it's about embracing a cooperative approach across the value chain. So there have been some retailers that have been quite aggressive towards landlords. Um, we certainly do not believe that that is appropriate um, in, in this environment at all. We have adopted a very cooperative approach. We understand that just as COVID is affecting us, it's affecting them, uh, it's affecting our funders, it's affecting our service providers. And really what we need to do is show that responsible leadership across the value chain working together with our partners in order to get the right solutions and i think we have done that very well um you know we have already concluded deals with 19 out of our 20 top 20 tenants um and and they represent 56 percent of our rental now in all cases they are paying full rent um for the month of of june onwards so really the impact has been around uh, april and may um, and we've got the detail in the presentation around sort of what those, uh, those concessions have been. But Ito and the team have been absolutely amazing in, in getting that done. And equally in Spain, Alfonso has taken a leadership approach in bringing together uh, a number of the landlords um, to try and work out how best to engage with the, uh, with the tenants. And, uh, you know, we've made very good progress there. So there we did give a full rent concession for the month of, of April. And um, in May, we are in the process of negotiating with them as to how to do it. So remember, it's quite a bizarre situation we're in because Spain effectively only opened up on the 25th of May um, and is in sort of their complete, you know, their, their sort of phase three by the 22nd of June. Um, and they are largely through the, 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 the crisis. Um, South Africa opened up quicker and yet we are going into the teeth of the crisis overall. <laughs> So uh, some different issues that we have to manage around um, in the teams, but nonetheless, our overarching approach across the business was saying work cooperatively with your tenants in order to find solutions that work for both of us. It's not a one-way street, us to them or them to us. It's working cooperatively.